This is our latest uh, thrift store find, as well as uh, my latest uh, going to be restore project. It is a WebCore electronic memory, seven inch reel to reel tape recorder, seven and a half and three and three quarter inches speed. It is from 1953. It is the model 210-1. It weighs about 40 pounds. It has a seeing eye tube for a record level. Um, it's complete. It has the microphone in the um, lid, as you can see over there. Um, and I'm going to be powering up slowly on the Variac, as well as monitoring the current. Um, Which is also vintage. Yeah. And, um, let's see where we're at in terms of mechanical electronic operation with it. And, uh, if it, it most likely probably will need recapped, I will be recapping it. Um, this is just a test. Um, nice part is this was $70 at the thrift store with a 75% off tag on it. So we got it for $18 and some odd cents. 71 cents. 71 cents, that's right. So. Now, we... something funny, I'm sorry to interrupt you, honey, but something funny about that is we were standing there looking at this and it said $69.99 and 75% off. And, um,. I, I said to Spats, I said, I have no idea what that is in my head. I don't know, 20, 25 bucks. Guy sitting next to us goes, $18.71. And I'm like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry it took me a minute. I'm like, um, okay, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Smarter I, than I am. I couldn't think of it because I was nervous because there's too many people around me. Yeah, there were a bunch of people. Yeah, but here's what we're going to do. We just set the power on. Well, actually, let me show what the features of this first. Okay. Again, recording eye level, uh, or seeing eye tube, record level. It is, um, you, you don't have to change um, uh, the tape, the reel, um, when it hits the end, you can uh, go forward and reverse, and the heads will automatically change accordingly. Um, and it's neat, because all you have to do to do fast forward or rewind, you press down and turn. And record is mainly that. And um, let's see, output, uh, I'm gonna have to look at it, but like one is the internal speaker, two's like a headphone or line level out, and other outputs, that's all that means. And of course, you have your standard on off volume and uh, bass and treble control. Um, I think it said there's it has 6v6 push-pull uh, tubes in it for audio output. And somebody else said I think it's uh, 70 hertz to 10,000 hertz on 7.5. Which is still going to sound pretty decent. It's not the full frequency range, but still that's going to sound really good. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to get this test started. Uh, I'm going to eventually build like a little platform where it's going to house this. Um, Maybe the isolation transformer and a maybe an analog meter for current, but in the meantime, I have the kilowatt meter on here. So flip this on. There, it's humming a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and kick this on. Turn on minimum, and I'm gonna start off on 10 volts, and it's drawing 0.09 amps. So. I'm going to bring it up like 10 volts every 10 minutes or so to very carefully reform the caps to see where we're at. So, well good, that's kind of good. It's at 1110 for 10 volts, so 1120 it'll be 20 volts and so forth. You have enough time to reform. Thank you for ruining my video with the ass fumes. You're welcome. Glad I could be of, assist of assistance. And now we're going to bump it up to 40 volts. Drawing 0.09 amps right now. So far, so good. We got some good signs of life around 70 volts or so. We're at 80. It's actually a lamp in there that there must be a lens that was supposed to be over top that square rectangle there. Motor's spinning freely. Hear the fan for it too, and the 
capstan spins very easily. There is some life in the audio. It's going to need some deoxit, but you can hear it scratch a little. Very hi-fi sounding already. <laughs> At 90 volts. We're seeing about 0.57 amps and 49 watts. Now that's also including the um, Variac as well. I should have put it in front of the Variac, but that's just what I did. So we're going to see some of the power draw from the Variac as well. Made up the full voltage. Um, the filter caps are still good, um, though it ain't working perfectly. It is going to need recapped, but as is, it does work. Uh, pretty steady speed um, and here's what we found out um, let me let me I'll show I'll demo it playing uh, I don't know if I mentioned this the outputs um, I have it yeah I did mention it but I'm gonna say one is your speaker and I have to figure out what two three and four go to um, there's jacks on the side um, the magic eye tube actually works perfectly um, we'll demo that in a minute um, Though recording is nothing but static, so probably again needs recapped. Um, but this is a unique uh, unit. You don't have to rethread the tape. It uh, is it's not auto reversing. It's manual, but all you do is flip this either way. This is a record and erase head. This is a record and erase head. Here's your pinch roller. Here's your capstan. Um, all the felt pads are still good. It's clean. I demagnetized it. It works great. Um, in fact, smells vintage. In fact, let's. Uh, I'll show that next. Um, what we'll do. Um, this is off a. This is a recording I'm making on another real tour, which I will reveal in another video upcoming soon. It's near. It's like 95% complete. It's a cosmetic um, issue I'm working on now for a vinyl cover for it. But that being said, um, this tape I'm playing originated when I was in high school off a real to real tape that I wanted, but. I didn't. I, I knew the real, ta real, real tape was probably gonna be thrown out sometime, so I should have just taken it, but I didn't. So I made a copy to a normal bias cassette using a Califone tape recorder, and then I took that cassette and I dubbed it onto this real-to-real -real review in a future video, because that's where this audio came from. So it's a recent recording I did, but although it's vintage in content. So I'm gonna slide this. Um, into uh, before I do that, um, you push down and rotate, and that does not engage the um, pinch roller, allowing this to fast forward or rewind. But if you just leave it as is, it'll just uh, show close up of the pinch roller. Um, it's going to engage just like this. What you're hearing right now, that little glitching, that whoever recorded it 40, 50 years ago did that. So, for being a 61, almost 62 year old unit and still function, shows you pure quality right here. When you, most things today you can't even last out of the box. So just a little liner work to it and you should be good to go. Uh, bass and treble control works good. Um, when I crank it up, it's mostly treble. Turn it all the way down, it's bass. Probably sound better once I recap it. jack on the side looks like it was added judging by how the hole was cut out on it. I don't know. I'll have to verify that. But um, it just doesn't look correct.
is the nameplate for it. Uh, Webster Chicago. It's like right after they changed their name to Webcore. Um, so that's the nameplate. Here's your power cord, original power cord. And almost after this song's up, I. Uh, actually smells like my high school AV room because my high school is old. And this is how the AV room smelled really strongly and I love it. They, they need to make a cologne like this. I'd be all for that. Let's see whoever made that original world. Now listen to this. Here's me at 817. I got two tape recorders. One a sharp, one a big stem. Right now the sharp is the only one that works. I got cut off. And the original tapes on here have French recordings on it. Est-ce que ça serait pas un avantage pour les citadins s'ils mettaient leur automobile personnel de côté là qui faisait plus? Audi, if you're watching this, this is one of your tapes. They see how it's buzzing. That's what happens when I try to record with it. So that's all we're getting out of it. The only other problem we're having is um, I'm gonna stop it. Uh, brakes aren't working on it either, so I'll have to take a look at that. But here's the original microphone. It's pop metal, but it's heavy. <laughs> it's not plastic. It has a nice uh, grill cloth. But I just want to demo what the um, Magic Eye Tube's doing. So I'm going to set this down for a sec because it ain't going to do any good. So. Now you see the magic eye tube is lit. I'm gonna adjust it. It's gonna adjust with the distortion. But, and basically when it gets to here, that's when you start you're maxed out on your level. And then once you do that, you're clipping. It's kind of cool how that works. I always this is actually my first device I've ever had with a magic eye tube. I need to get more much more tube audio stuff, but yeah. So that's what how that works. Okay, now I'm gonna demo rewind real quick. Oops. Oh, and actually, that's one of the things I wanted to test right there. Um, if it, and this is the reversing mode, where it engage the other head, the tape's going the other way. Again in French, but and you do a rewind, see the brakes aren't engaging. But if I press down and rotate. Now I'm going to stop it, it's unfortunately going to spool out, see? So the brakes are having a little trouble. That's one thing, I'm going to have this thing fully apart and fully lubricated. But you see the flywheel was still going, it's very, you know, has a good amount of weight to it and it seems to be well lubricated still. And that's about it for now. Um, this is going to be a part one. Uh, I plan on taking it apart and ordering um, new caps for it, as well as um, lubricating everything and uh, doing whatever I, I can to restore this to full 100% functionality after 60 some years so there you go thanks for watching and the badger says what does the badger say